Hello and welcome to the next session of Old Testament history where again we're tracing the prophecy that was originally referred to in the Garden of Eden all the way through to its fulfillment in Jesus. Today brings us, uh, we're going to cover four prophets. Uh, the first one is Joel. Now there is some controversy among the scholars about exactly when Joel prophesied. Uh, some people thought he prophesied real early somewhere around 800 BC. Uh, there are others who think he prophesied during the exile, the Babylonian exile, around 400 or so B.C. Um, but Joel was really, in one sense, not a messianic uh, prophet, uh, but more of a prophet who spoke about the future glory of God's people. And since they're, one of his prophecies is probably one of the most familiar in the New Testament, I thought I would just read it, but in, in Joel chapter 2, Beginning in verse 28, he says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And again, you will readily recognize that that passage of Scripture was quoted by the Apostle Peter uh, as recorded in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. So again, Joel prophesied about the future glory of God's people, not necessarily the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. Which brings us to Obadiah. Obadiah is one of the shortest prophets, uh, only consisting of only one chapter. And again, not a messianic uh, prophet. He spoke of the destruction of Edom because of the harm that the people of Edom brought upon the people of Judah. Which brings us to Haggai. Uh, Haggai was a prophet during the Babylonian exile at the, the same time as the prophet Daniel. But while Daniel prophesied from Babylon, Haggai prophesied from Judah, probably in the city of Jerusalem. Haggai was one of the ones who went back to Jerusalem uh, when um, Cyrus let the people go back. And uh, Haggai's main message, again, it's not messianic, but Haggai's main message to the people in the city of Jerusalem, the people of Judah, was rebuild the temple. That's one of the reasons they went back and they had failed to do that. And so Haggai spoke to the people time and time again, rebuild the temple. Which brings us to Zechariah. Again, Zechariah prophesied during the same time as Haggai. Again, in, this, in the nation of Judah, was one of those who was allowed to go back uh, from Babylon. Zechariah is a, is a fascinating book. If you haven't read it lately, I would encourage you to sit down and read it. There are many, many visions. Um, and I have, um, I don't understand a lot of them. Uh, there are a lot of scholars who, who have differing opinions upon uh, what a lot of these visions mean. But Zechariah was a Messianic prophet. Uh, but he refers to Jesus as the branch. In chapter 3, beginning in verse 8, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, you and your friends who sit before you, for they are men who are a sign. Behold, I will bring my servant the branch. In chapter 6, uh, in verse 12, And say to him, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold the man whose name is the branch, for he shall branch out from his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. It is he who shall build the temple of the Lord, and shall bear royal honor, and shall sit and rule on his throne. And so Zechariah refers to the Messiah, refers to Jesus as the branch. And you may remember that earlier in the history of Israel, the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah referred to the Messiah, referred to Jesus as the branch, the shoot of Jesse. In um, Zechariah chapter 9, Beginning in verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. 
Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And again, that was fulfilled by Jesus as recorded by Matthew in his gospel in chapter 21. So again, Zechariah never refers to Jesus by name, but he calls him the branch. And again, these prophecies are fulfilled in the, Old, uh, in the New Testament. Which brings us to Malachi. Now Malachi again prophesied during the same time as Zechariah and, and Haggai to the remnant of the, of the Israelites who had returned to Judah from their Babylonian captivity. And Malachi's message, much like Haggai's message, you've come back to rebuild the temple, you've come back to worship God. Malachi's message is you have failed to worship God properly. The people were bringing uh, the lame animals to sacrifice instead of the animals that had no blemish. They were not giving their tithes to the Lord. And so Malachi, if you will, hammers home the point. You've been allowed by God to come back. God has fulfilled his promise to let you come back. And now you have failed to worship God. So next week, we are going to start on the so what, if you will. So what does all of this mean? So there was this mention in this promise mentioned in the Garden of Eden that was ultimately fulfilled by Jesus. Okay, what's the point? What's the point to the people uh, who were alive when Jesus showed up and reads that passage from Isaiah and says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing? What's the point of all that? And then more importantly, what is the point to you and I? Why study all of these prophets? We'll start on that next week. Well, I pray that you'll have a great week.